What's going on guys? In today's video, I am going to be melting down these hard drives. As you can see, I have already ripped out the guts, everything from the inside, and we are left with good aluminum. So now we're going to load the hard drives into the crucible. But first, we need to pull out the slag from my previous melt. It's very easy to remove this the day after once the aluminum has solidified and just basically just pull it out. I am using a 12 kg crucible and these hard drives fit very well, except for the fourth one. The fourth one, well, it doesn't quite fit four of them comfortably. In today's melt, I'm going to be using the Viver 12 kg propane furnace. If you would like to get one for yourself, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. One for a 6 kg and one for a 12 kg. If you want to be like me and start out small, go with the 6 kg because that's what I did. Before loading the crucible into the furnace, I always like to put a piece of cardboard in between the plinth block and the crucible. By doing this, it helps prevent the crucible from sticking to the block. Now that the furnace is loaded, it's time to light the furnace. Now that the hard drives are melted, I'm going to throw some heat sinks into the mix because I don't have any more hard drives. Oh yeah, the inside of the hard drives contains other pieces of aluminum like all these rings and other doodads like that. So let's load them into the crucible. While we wait for that last bit of aluminum to melt down, I'm going to preheat my crucible tongue. It's not good to grab a hot crucible with cold crucible tongues. Oh yeah, and also the graphite mold. We will be pouring that molten metal into. Preheat that too. Now that the metal is fully molten, it is now time to scoop out the dross from the top of the molten metal. I'm going to push it to one side using a graphite stirring stick and then just scoop it out with a spoon. Unfortunately, it is quite windy today and it did affect the filming because it blew around my camera slightly, but I managed to get some good footage without a wobbly camera. So I let this set for about 10 or 15 minutes and you can see it just does not want to come out. So fortunately, I do have other graphite ink and molds. They're just a little bit smaller, so I'm not going to be able to fit the remaining amount of molten aluminum into it. So after this ingot is filled to the top, I'll then try to give another attempt at removing the aluminum ingot from the previous mold. If successful, I'll then reuse that mold for the remainder of the molten metal.
and it's a success. So now it is time to pour out the remaining molten metal into that mold. After I finish organizing my workspace. So I'm going to let the smaller ingot set for a little bit longer and hope that comes out easily. And I'm going to quench this one on this little tiny piece of ice. Because I no longer have any ice to quench the aluminum in, I'm going to use this Folgers coffee container and drop the aluminum into that. And this one came out much easier than the first one. And this one, of course, comes out much easier because it's really only a quarter of the mold. I mainly only have problems removing the ingots from the molds when they're full molds. Alright guys, it's now the next day and the ingots are dry. It's time to get a weight on these ingots and see what we have here. Alright guys, we're looking pretty good. I have 2.83 pounds of aluminum. 1,285 grams. 1.285 kilograms and 45.3 ounces. And I'm just gonna put these on my shelf that I have all of my ingots stored and ready to be remelted for any of my future projects. 